nice shooting, Creeper. Well, I couldn't miss her. It's coming right at me. But Carver didn't miss either. I'd better get that out of there for you, sir. Sure wish I had a drink of whiskey for you, sir. No, Creeper. Oh, it's in too deep. You better break off the shaft and get me back to the fort. Dr. Gibson can dig out the head. Dr. Gibson? Well, yeah, I'm right, sir, if that's the way you want it. Sure, you're all right. Sure, I'm sure. Don't joggle him so. Incision. Cramp. You see, soldier? Yeah. The eyes, I see it. One little pull. There she is. The blood. Wayland, quickly. Hello, Creever. Have any trouble with Bacala? A little, sir. Major Vandegrift in the leg. Van, where is he? That doctor's operating. Operating? Doc, you gotta stop it. The linens, more linens, quickly. Gibson, what's the matter? It's a femoral artery. I can't we'll move. Stop bleeding, sir. It, it was unavoidable. I swear. So, with all respect, sir, I must state that you have compelled me to entrust the lives and the health of my command to the incompetence, the drunkards, and the misfits that have been assigned to me by the Army Medical Department. I urge you to send better surgeons than the last three we've had, or none at all. Send that to the Surgeon General, Washington, D.C. Up there. Creeper. I want those supplies put in the wagons just as soon as the train pulls in. Yes, sir. We want to get a good start to the fort before sundown with those new rifles. We'll have them loaded, sir, before you can see George Armstrong Custer. It's running a little early today. Only two and a half hours late. My, they give you a real reception out west, don't they? Funny, they've never run after me like that before. That shows how they've missed you, Aunt Martha. <laughs> nice to have you back. Thank you, Peter. It's good to be back. How's Ethan? Colonel's fine, ma'am. Says he can hardly wait to see you and Miss... Uh... All right, all right. Just control yourselves. I'll introduce everybody. Miss Laurie McKay, Captain Peter Blake. Welcome to the west, Miss McKay. Thank you, Captain. And Lieutenants Raymond and Finlay. How do you do, ma'am? Howdy, ma'am. My, what handsome officers. Miss McKay, I got $305 and two saddles and a brace of dueling pistols my grandpa left me. 
I know this ain't much to get married on, but, uh... What? Don't take his proposal too seriously, Miss McKay. At least until you've considered mine. My goodness, you too. I'm the reserved type. I'm waiting for a moonlit night. Are they all like this, Aunt Martha? <laughs> it's the heat, I think. Just ignore them. Ignore them? <sighs> what a vacation I'm going to have. <laughs> That's what I'm afraid of. But you haven't met the handsomest one of them all. Didn't Van come with you? What's the matter? He's all right, isn't he? No, he's dead. How did it happen? Uh, a renegade Kiowa, Mrs. Walters. Major Vandegrift got a arrow in his leg. In his leg? Yes, and Dr. Gibson did the rest. I'm begging your pardon, sir. The supplies are loaded. Thank you, Creeper. This way, ladies. Excuse me. Are you from Fort McCullum? Yes. I'm the new post-surgeon, Dr. Seward. I was wondering about transportation. Right behind you. Back to wherever you came from. Peter, we met Dr. Seward on the train. Oh? He wasn't very sociable, but he's quite a good doctor, I think. Thank you. I fainted from the heat, and he took the proper steps. A difficult case. My orders are to report to the commanding officer at Fort McCullough. Orders? What orders? A lieutenant. So now they're handing out commissions. Very well, Lieutenant. Do you have a uniform? Yes, I had it made in New York. Creever. See that Lieutenant Seward is in uniform and back in five minutes. Yes, sir. Then get him a mount. You can ride, can't you? Well, I, uh... Well, you'll have to unless you want to walk 60 miles. This way, ladies. Uh, this way, sir. That wasn't exactly a rousing welcome. Oh, well, you mustn't blame the captain too much, sir. It's very disappointing, sir. What's disappointing, Sergeant? Well, uh, I hope that perhaps maybe you might have some of the more valuable medicines with you, sir. Like some rare old Irish whiskey, for example. I'm afraid I didn't bring any whiskey, Sergeant, but, uh... I might order some. What's it needed for, chiefly? Uh, sunstroke, sir. And for the chill that comes in the night in the desert. You know, this is a fearful, unpleasant climate out here, sir. It's a deadly climate. Is that so? Is the death rate pretty high? Well, the same as it is back east. One to a person. <sighs> well, if you have your uniform on, sir, we... <laughs> Is it all right? Well, it's dazzling, sir. Frankly, it's the first time I've ever worn it, and I feel a little silly somehow. Yes. Uh, I think it might be better, sir, if you walked out behind me. out here, Sergeant? Kiowa, sir. Although every now and then some wandering Comanches ride through just to prove their manhood. But Kiowa's mostly. Oh, Satanta's reservation is only a few miles from the post. Oh, I see. Then they're all on a reservation. Yes, sir. One mile of land for every five square Indians. Well, Sergeant, does that mean that they're all tamed? Tamed, is it? Well, sir, you would never say that if you'd ever campaigned against them. It took one of the toughest winters in 50 years to get him out. Starved, half-frozen. 
Where are your sidearms, mister? I didn't think surgeons were supposed to carry arms, Captain, according to regulations. Redskins don't observe the rules of war, mister. In fact, they've never heard of them. Sergeant, pistol, cartridge belt, and carbine for Lieutenant Seward. And you might show him how to use them. Yes, sir. Are you ladies comfortable? Is anything ever comfortable in the army? Every bone in my bustle is bruised. And you, Miss McKay? I'm quite comfortable, thank you. Just lonesome. Can't you ride with us, Captain? I'd like to, but I'm afraid it'd make me unpopular with Finley and Raymond. And uh, if either of them rode with you, he'd be unpopular with me. Oh. Well, how about Dr. Seward, then? He's unpopular already. I'll speak to him at once, ma'am. Done much riding, have you, Doctor? After today, I will have. Still 20 more miles before we make camp, and 20 more tomorrow before we reach Fort McCullough. Maybe you'd prefer to ride in the ambulance with the ladies. Miss McKay has taken pity on you. She invites you to join her. Thank her, but I'm finding this quite an experience. I uh, could make it an order, Lieutenant. Yes, you could, Captain. But you won't. Because you've got too much of a dislike for doctors. I guess I do, mister. You might as well know it. Your predecessor was a drunkard, the one before him a drug addict, and before him a sadistic butcher who was never happy unless he had a knife in his hand. Gives a man something to live up to, doesn't it? Now they send us schoolboys. <laughs> will be bruised. <laughs> Unless it's a little nip of Irish whiskey when the night chill is setting in. Right now, I'd be willing to trade them both for a good feather bed. Cheap supplies and crying eyes. Why, kiss me quick and go. Oh, kiss me quick and go, my honey. Kiss me quick and go. To cheap surprise and crying eyes. Why, kiss me quick and go. Soon after that, I gave my love a moonlight promise. You know, the last time I heard that song, sir, I was home in Ireland at the county Cork, in a little vine-covered saloon. I'm feeling mighty low. Oh, kiss me quick and go, my honey. Kiss me quick and go. To cheap surprise and crying eyes. Why, kiss me quick and go. Oh, kiss me quick and go, my honey. Kiss me quick and go. To cheap surprise and crying eyes. 
surprise and dry and eyes like kiss me quick and go soon after that i gave my love a moonlight promenade at last we fetched up to the door just where the old folks stay the clock struck 12 the heart struck two and peeping overhead we saw a nightcap raise the blind and what do you think she said oh kiss me quick and go my honey kiss me quick and go to cheat what was that who fired that shot sentries report host number one all's well host number two all's well host number four all's well post number three report that's creever the trouble's at the wagon sir I don't know exactly. I heard something. I saw some people moving around. People? You mean Indians? They were Indians, all right. Were they Kiowas? How should I know? Well, how many of them were there? I don't know. It didn't seem like many at first. Then I got up to investigate. Investigate? Who asked you to investigate? It all happened so fast. Why didn't you give the alarm at once? And why don't you stop shouting? At least I wasn't leading our community sing. Creva, where's Creva? He's over here, sir. Check the supplies. Yes, sir. Are you all right, Dr. Seward? Why, yes. It's nice to have someone ask. He's got a bad cut. Yeah, I can see that, Doctor. Captain, I got away with ten of the new repeaters and four boxes of cartridges. Ten repeating rifles? Yes, sir. Have the men saddle up at once, Mr. Raymond. We going after them tonight? We're getting to the fort as fast as we can. Yes, sir. Just a minute, Captain. This man may have a fracture. Can you move your left arm? Yes. All right, now see if you can wiggle your fingers. What do you mean like that, sir? Well, there's no sign of a fracture. I think you'll be all right. How are you feeling, Creeper? Oh, is that you, sir? Ah, I'm fine, I'm fine. Take more than an Indian axe to put you away. Step to it, Mr. Raymond. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, ladies, but I'm afraid you won't be getting much sleep tonight. And until we get those rifles back, there won't be much sleep for any of us. Sound assembly. Well, he shouldn't wake up until we reach the fort. I'm sorry about Sergeant Creever. Oh, he'll be all right. I'm sure he will. It's just that, well, this is the first time a man had to be hit over the head before another man would ride with me. Did you arrange that? Well, no. But the fates must have taken pity on me. I've never seen a man so wrapped up in his work. Five days on the same train, and you never took your nose out of your medical books until I fainted. That was something you did arrange, wasn't it? Yes. <laughs> Well, things should be better for you now. You're among men who have been in their jobs longer. Can relax and notice a pretty girl. So you did notice? Yes, sir. Uh... Was there anything we can do? Not a thing. He's just dreaming of those Indians. You'd better try and get a little rest. Doctor's orders. Let's say recommendation.
more men. Martha, dear. Ethan, darling. Who was that, Captain? A crevice, sir. Nothing serious. All right. Easy, man. This way, Doctor. Don't they ever air this place? Put him down on that. the supplies. As far as I know, this is it. Doc Gibson never used much except calomel, croton oil, quinine, and whiskey. Mostly whiskey. I'll get my own bag. I'll fetch it for you, sir. Thank you. How's the head, Creever? <laughs> well, sir, I know it's still there. But now, if I just had a little nip of the right stuff, sir, it would give it would that... would give you a real headache. The Colonel's compliments, sir. Will Dr. Stewart report to headquarters at once? Tell him I'll be there as soon as I can. But, sir, there you are, sir. Thank you. The colonel wants to see you, and he said it once. I heard you. Pardon me. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll explain to the colonel. It's good to have a doctor on the post. Doctor? They could just as easily be Comanches. I'm certain they were Kiowas, sir. Probably knew we were going for supplies, waited their chance, hit, hightailed it back to the reservation. Well, if they were Kiowas, they're more apt to be off in the hills somewhere. The head count will tell us who's missing, sir. Maybe. Dr. Seward, sir. Oh, come in, doctor. This is Lieutenant Seward, the new surgeon, Colonel Walters. How do you do, sir? Welcome to Fort McCullough, doctor. Your uh, first experience in the Army? Yes, sir. I uh, have my orders here, sir. Sorry to keep you waiting, but Sergeant Creever is in the... Yes, sir. So Mr. Raymond explained. I was Creever. Well, I'll have to keep him under observation for a few days. Sir, that hospital, it's filthy. The last doctor liked it that way. Well, I don't, sir. I'm glad to hear it. Would you like some coffee, doctor? Yes, thank you. Dr. Seward was so wonderful, the way he discovered those Indians. If it hadn't been for him, we might have all been killed. All they wanted was to steal some rifles, which they did. Oh, you were wonderful, too, Captain. The way you ordered everyone around. Doctor, do you think you could possibly identify any of the Indians on that raiding party? It'd be mighty helpful if you could. Well, I don't know. I didn't see them too clearly, sir. But if you saw some Kiowas, uh, couldn't you at least tell whether they were dressed the same? I don't know. I might. Assemble a troop, Captain. Yes, sir. You better finish your coffee. I want you to ride out to the reservation with Captain Blake. Ride, sir? Does he have to ride again so soon? And I'd suggest you change into something more appropriate for riding. Yes, sir. Scared look off your face, mister. It's bad policy. Stay close man. to me. Make them step lively over there. Use your carbines. All right. Keep moving. Pretty a little rough, aren't you, Captain? 
I know my business, Doctor. All right, you. Move. Hurry it up. Move on. All right, all right. Keep moving. Move on. Why do soldiers come here? What do they want? You know what I want, Satanta? Ten carbines. Hey, you there. Move on. Ten like these, stolen from our camp last night. Comanche, maybe. Not Kiowa. I say Kiowa. Come on, come on. You'll save yourself time and trouble by turning them in now. Hurry it up. No rifles. All right. You've had your chance. We're all lined up, sir. Come on, doctor. <laughs> No one's gonna hurt you. This boy is sick. Your son? Sick. You understand? That's no concern of ours, Doctor. Over here. Come along. All right, move. We'll go right down the line. Well, they just don't look the same somehow. As I said, I didn't see much except their moccasins. Well, are they the same? Ankaita. Same to Hasipka. My father tells me you've come for rifles. These are the rifles of the Kiowa. Where have you been, Redleaf? The soldier chief knows everything. Why he asked me? I don't have to, I know. Look at your horses. You've ridden a long way. Yes. Hunting so our people can eat. In the south, maybe, where we camped last night. Doctor, take a good look at these rabbit hunters. How about that headband? Oh, the scar? Well, this amulet, no touch. Don't let that scowl frighten you, Doctor. Take a good look. I just don't know, that's all. All right, Doctor. Nothing except this one old buffalo gun. It's rusty at that. Harish. Now, no one's gonna hurt you. High fever. How long has he been like this? <laughs> Evil spurred into him. I only wish I'd brought my medicine. Medicine, man, do you? You too? I'm Dr. Seward. Is that tight? I know it's not very ethical to interfere in another doctor's practice, but it looks to me as if your patient has a case of malaria. Malaria? I'm afraid so. I haven't any quinine with me, but I'd like to suggest that you keep him on liquids. Hot soup. No eat. Starve out, evil spirit. Of course, that's one school of thought, starve a fever, but what I was thinking, if you could make him a good strong soup out of one of those rabbits, it might help. You understand English, don't you? Talk English. <laughs> My name, Seward. Your name? Manu Ten. 
Mr. Seward! I'll be right with you. Nine you ten. Your son? Mr. Seward, we're moving out! He's a fine boy. I hope you'll do as I said. It's not your job to wet nurse the enemy, Doctor. I'd hardly call a little boy the enemy, Captain. Call him a tomb! Call him a tomb! Bye! Bye. Bye. Boy's mother, Redleaf's wife. Did anything about her strike you as being funny? No Kiowa strikes me as funny. Well, that's just it. Is she a Kiowa? Maybe not. Kiowas took all kinds of captives, Comanches, Apaches, Sioux, or Arapahoes, raised them as their own. What of it? Well, what others did they take? What do you mean? She's lighter than the rest. She's got good features. And I'll swear she understood every word I said. She's a Kiowa squaw, mister. That's all I want to know about her. And I advise you to forget it. Well, how do you like it, Creeper? Well, it's a joy to see the old hospital looking so clean that a man wouldn't die of shock the minute he's brought into it. <laughs> oh. Your head still bothering you? Uh, no, sir, no. It's not me head, sir. It's me jaw. Well, let's take a look at it. Oh, sir. I got a bad tooth, and it's killing me. You know, my father in Ireland, sir, he had the greatest cure for this kind of thing. Oh, he did? Well, I'd like to know about it. Well, if you just have a little medicinal whiskey, sir, to hold against the aching tooth, the pain goes right away. That's interesting. Medicinal whiskey, huh? Oh, it's... Is that about right? Well, it's a mighty big tooth, sir. Here you are. Ah, oh, thank you, sir. You hold it against the tooth, is that it? Yes, sir. Well, you shouldn't have done that, Doctor. I swallowed it, man. I'm sorry, Creeper. <laughs> it's all right. Here. Now, what are you doing here? You swallowed it again? I couldn't help myself, sir. I swear it. Well, maybe you couldn't. Uh, no, if I could just have one more, sir. You really think it'll work this time? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Maybe we'd better pull it. Uh, no, 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 sir. The whiskey's all I'll need, sir. Are you sure? Well, I told you about my father in Ireland. He never had a bad tooth in his head, sir. As a matter of fact, there wasn't a bad tooth in the entire house. He should have been a dentist. Yes, sir. This is the last one you can have, Creeper. I've got to save a little for emergencies. You'd better say goodbye now, so you won't forget again. Yes, yes, Thank you, sir. Goodbye, doctor. What can I do for you, Maria? Is a tie want you come? Is a tie. My people sick. Oh. Are they very sick? Yes. Young, old, many sick. Satanta, red leaf. Red leaf, too. And as the time wants me to come. Manyitan, tell him. Send for you. Oh, Manyitan. 
She insisted on sending for the white doctor, is that it? Tell me the truth. Isn't Manny Tan white? Manny Tan Kiowa. All right. I'll have to speak to the colonel. He'll want to send a patrol. Isatai say you come along. No soldiers. But I can't, Maria. The colonel's given us orders that no one is to go near the reservation. I say you not come. Wait. Wait a minute, Maria. Tell Manya Tan. No, I'll tell her myself. I'll go. Good morning, Doctor. Good morning, Miss McKay. I don't ever recall meeting a man whose time is more completely taken up with other things whenever I'm around. Can't help it. Doctor on a military post seems to be a combination of surgeon, dentist, and veterinarian. My uncle's very pleased with you. He is? Mm-hmm. But I'm not. You're not? Sorry to hear it. Are you really? Could I ask you a personal question? Well, it depends. How personal? Well, fairly personal, I'm afraid. Why did you come out here? To practice medicine. Well, couldn't you have done that in New York? I might have. But it's not as easy as you think to build up a practice. Is that the only reason? The Army offered me a chance to practice medicine for three years, which was just what I wanted. So I took it, and I'm grateful. Well, I guess my hunch was wrong. I thought maybe there was a girl back home. There were plenty of girls, but no one girl. And you? There were plenty of men, but no one man. Seems to be the same story here with Raymond and Finley and Blake and the rest of the officers. But you're not doing your part. It's your turn to take me riding today. Riding? Yes. You're in the cavalry, aren't you? <gasps> yes, I am, but... Uh... I can't say that I really enjoy it yet. You'd better go with one of the other officers. I'll go with Captain Blake. He loves horseback riding. Serves him right. Goodbye, Doctor. Enjoy your ride. If you don't, my professional services are always available. It's amazing how far you can see from a little hill like this. It takes a bit of getting used to after you've lived back east. Yes. Must be pretty dull for you here. No, it isn't. I love it. You do? Of course I'm the center of attention of four attractive men. I wish you could think of me as an individual and not just one of a quartet. Don't I go riding with you more than anybody? Yes, but if Dr. Sue would like to ride, it'd be different. That's not so at all. He begged me to go riding with him today, and I wouldn't. I'm surprised at Seward. He's really developed a taste for riding, has he? Oh, no. He still loathes it. He said if I didn't go with him, nothing in the world would induce him to... Who's that? It's Seward. Dr. Seward, it can't be. It is, though. I guess he has developed a taste for riding, straight toward the reservation. To the Indians? That's dangerous, isn't it? Yes, dangerous and against orders until those rifles are found. I'll have to go after him. Will you go back and explain to the Colonel why I'm disobeying orders? I will, right away. I'm looking for Manutan. Man, you tend not here. My time. You go. I get you. May attire.
us a tie. Well, I guess doctors even get sick sometimes, don't they? That's something people forget. I have made strong medicine. Try drive out fire from body, but... Maybe if we put our medicines together. Uh, if my medicine not work... <laughs> Got malaria, all right. He's got it bad. We'll have to get some quinine into him. No, no. I'll we'll need no, a cup of water. No, no, no. Thank no. you. No. Spider Wolf. No, 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 no. The show to eat you. I'm going to eat you. Oh. Wait, I take your medicine. And then maybe my people take too. What does Tanta mean? Tanta? White. Thanks. I know what Tanta means now. And I think I know what he meant back there. He was saying he doesn't trust me because I'm white and that he doesn't trust you for the same reason. You've understood every word I've said. Your name isn't Manutan. What is it? My parents called me Teresa. They drowned crossing the Arkansas. Now I am Enuten, wife of Redleaf, daughter of Satanta, chief of Kiowas. You help my people when they're sick. I wish I could have done more. My people not want to live here. Once they were free and happy, now here in this place they grow pale and die. A long time ago, this land belonged to our fathers. Now, when I go up to the river, I see only camp of white soldiers. They cut down our trees, kill our buffalo. And when I see this, my heart feels like bursting. I feel sorry. You feel the same, don't you? But these are not your people. The little fellow's not much better. How many are sick? Twenty-two. Two already die. Is that your only water supply? Yes. Up there, in high country, is good water. Is that where the Kiowas used to go in the summer? Yes. We don't know what causes malaria, but we do know that it's not common on high ground. You've got to get away from this place. Are you telling these people to move, Doctor? You're really trying to make trouble, aren't you? Please get some water. No. I'm trying to undo some of the trouble you've made. Or whoever's responsible for making them come here. We won't argue about that now, Doctor. You've disobeyed orders by coming here. Let's go. 
Doctor, I said let's go. Now we'll fix you up, little fellow. I said let's go, Doctor. It's gonna be all right. Now, son, drink this. You're under arrest. Two people have already died of malaria here. Twenty-two more are sick. Would you mind not shooting me until after I've treated them? Menyuten. Menyuhasha. Ishko. Ishko. The little fellow will be all right now. Redley, very sick. Nunca. One head, Nana. Well, mister, how do you like Indians now? Quite a report, Doctor. Thank you, sir. If anybody can catch those Bronco Comanches, Blake can. I'm sure he'll find them, Ethan. At least we know who's got the rifles. Now we have a malaria epidemic right on our doorstep. I hope I can check it, sir. Doctor, I'm gonna have to ask you not to go out to the reservation again. Why not? Why not? because I'm giving you an order, and this time I want it obeyed. I've got all our lives to think of, the men, their wives, and their children. I can't have you bring a Kiowa sickness in here. Kiowa sickness? They'd never be sick at all if they hadn't been ordered to stay where they are. Well, maybe, maybe not. Your report will go to Washington. But, sir, that'll take months. That's right, Doctor, so it will. Until then, I have my orders, and so have you. I'm sorry, sir, but I can't obey them. Alan! You can't obey my orders? 
I expected orders when I went into the army, but not to withhold treatment from the sick. Lieutenant Seward, you're confined to your quarters pending investigation. Sergeant? Yes, sir. Take Mr. Seward to his quarters. Colonel Walters, are you going to let the white girl die, too? White girl? I told you her story. I've heard other stories like it. She made her choice. She's a Kiowa squaw. Not now, sir. Her husband's dead. She's still a squaw. Once they've had an Indian's baby, they're Indian. She'll follow the custom and marry her dead husband's brother, Spotted Wolf. She will? When? As soon as the period of mourning is over. I see. Doctor, you're not interested in this girl, are you? Yes, I'm interested in her. I'm interested in any human being in trouble. If she wanted to come back, that would be different, of course. Does she? No, but... Laura, you agree with me. I don't know. I... I don't quite see why you're so concerned. find those Comanches. After a day's rest in the fort, we'll go out again. Yes, sir. Mister, those ten repeating rifles can mean a hundred lives. There's no smoke from the Kiowa camp. So you're right. Cold as a corpse. They've been gone at least a day, maybe two. Sent for me, Colonel? Yes. Thanks to you, the Kiowas have jumped the reservation. Is that so, sir? You're to blame for it. You put this crazy bug in their heads, this nonsense about the high country. Do you deny it? I don't wish to deny it, sir. I only hope that following my advice will help save some of their lives. Some of their lives? Mr. Seward, it's taken us years to get those Kiowas settled down on a reservation where we could watch them. And you've undone this in a few days. It's going to cost the lives of my soldiers I don't know how many before I can get them back. Sir, those people belong in the high country. High country? You'll find out about the high country, and you'll find out what it means to go on a fighting patrol. Pushing hard. Comanches. It sure is. Kiowas will have to wait right now at jobs to get those ten rifles back. Take half the troop, come in and them from the other side. When they see you, they'll hightail it back to where they came. That's where we'll be waiting for them. Good luck, Lieutenant. Yes, sir.
join forces with the Comanches. They've got Raven in a trap. than we counted on, Captain. <laughs> I'm glad we got a doctor on the post. Doctor... I suppose now we chase Kiowa some more. Now we'll go back with our wounded. And dead. get out by myself. Take this, you'll feel better. You heard what he said, Doc. He don't want any help from a woodhawk. What's all this about a woodhawk? A woodhawk's a bird that turns on his own kind. Yeah, Doc. A renegade. Miss McKay, would you please give these men their medicine? He told them to bring us here. Kyle, lover. If it wasn't for him, we wouldn't be here. Woodhawk. Woodhawk. Wood. Yeah, that's him, Doctor Woodhawk. Alan, they're so unfair. Come in. What is it, Maria? Say what you like, it's all right. You go with me. Well, I can't leave, there are soldiers at the door. Manyatin want to. Manyatin? Where is she? Outside. You meet me by window. I show you. Did you hear that, Lori? She's left the Kiowa, she's come back to her own people. But how do you know? She's here, isn't she? Maria, you go and I'll meet you. Alan, you're not going to her. 
Of course I am. But you can't leave. They'll court-martial you. Lori, this girl ran away and came back here because I urged her to. Now I've got to help her. Don't you understand? Yes, I suppose I do. I'm glad you've decided to come back to us. No. What's the matter? You helped me before. You gave me warning to leave place where I was or die. Yes? Now I give you warning. Leave this place. Quick. But why? Now Kaya was in command. She's drawing together. They declare war. They attack. They kill you. Go. Go away. Now, Doctor, just because some Indian girl tries... White girl, sir. ...tries to scare you with a ridiculous story that... I'm sure she's telling the truth. You've got to believe me. There's going to be an attack. Colonel Wallace. What is it, Blake? Sorry to interrupt, sir, but the sentries have captured a Kiowa girl. Bring her in. Is this the girl you were talking about? Yes, sir. What's your name? Manutin. Your people? Kiowa. I am daughter of Satanta, the chief. Mm-hmm. Manutin. Mr. Seward, I'm questioning this girl. Yes, sir. Did you tell Mr. Seward the Kiowas were going to attack? Have you anything to say? Put her under guard. Send Creever on a patrol. If there's anything big building up, you should find some evidence of it. Yes, sir. As for you, I suppose I'll have to put up with your interference until your replacement arrives. You are dismissed, doctor. No sign of the patrol yet? No, not yet, sir.
Finley! Who took their weapons? What's been done with them? I think they've been returned to the barracks, sir. I want every man's pistol and carbine by his side at all times. Get them. Yes, sir. Now, you men, listen. I don't care how sick you are. When that attack comes, you'll man your post somehow. And at the word fire, you'll fire. Even if you can't see anything but the spots before your eyes. We can't let them know that half our men are down with malaria. Well, the next time, there'll be no stopping them. Captain, these men can't fight off another attack. I know it, and they know it. Maybe somehow we can bluff them. You see, Doc, the men have got to hope for something. Even when in their hearts, they know they're going to die. The families are going to die. Because you disobeyed orders. Because I disobeyed orders. Alan, all you were trying to do was save lives. I know that isn't wrong. In this world, I guess it is wrong. I can't believe that and be a doctor. Does it matter if I'm a doctor or not? The important thing is I'm a woodhawk. I disobeyed orders. I turned against my own kind. Your own kind is the human race. Just because they don't seem to realize it doesn't make you wrong. Don't let them change you. Medicine man, Isatai. Did he get well? 
And I must talk to him. I must show him the mistake his people would be making. They listen to him, don't they? Sometimes. I'll have to take the chance. Wait. Give to Spotted Wolf. He will know you come as a friend. Thanks. Seward? Right into the Indian camp, sir. If he tells him we've got malaria. I could have put a bullet in his back. I wish you had. Open those gates. May I talk to you? They say that Dr. Seward has deserted. I saw him come in here. Do you know why he left? He go to Isatai. He thinks he can talk to Kiowas to make peace. I knew it. I knew he wasn't deserting. Do you think they'll listen to him? No. You don't? And you don't care. It doesn't matter much to you, does it? He may be killed. And when your people attack, we'll all be killed. Except you. I hope they will not attack. Are you sure of that? I hope Dr. Seward will come back safe. I'm a friend of the Kiowa. Take me to Isatai. 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 Kiowas want war now, not peace. But we don't want war, Doctor. We're not killers, you and I. It's our job to preserve life, not take it. Too late now. But you'll be saving your people. Kiowa people want war now. It will do you no good to kill white men. Others will come, many others. You cannot stop them. You are brave men, all of you. Kiowas and Comanches. But you can only do yourselves harm if you go on with this war. But you'll go away and do no more killing. He came as a spy. No. He came in peace. He is not our friend. He must die. Spotted Wolf, I am your friend. Manutan said this. Manutan?
I thought you shot him. So did I. Far enough, Mr. Seward. Wait here. All right, Doctor. What word do you bring from your Indian friends? I won't surrender if that's what they want. That wouldn't do any good. Satanta's son is critically wounded. He has a bullet at the base of his brain. And you're afraid he'll die. Some of our men are in bad shape, too, Doctor. Aren't you worried about them? I'm worried about all of you. This whole thing's a trap, sir. He's told them our situation here, and they've come to see for themselves. Colonel, we know what kind of a man this is. A traitor to his own people. All right. Call me a renegade, a Kiowa lover. A man who can't be trusted because I looked upon these people as human beings and tried to help them. The only chance you've got to save your lives, all of your lives, is for me to save the life of this man. And the only reason you've got that chance is because some of them are convinced that I'm their friend. Are you going to let me operate and try to save him? Or are you going to keep us talking until he dies? Suppose you operate, and then he dies. Bring him into the hospital. Alan, they told me you were... I'm going to need some help. Will you help me? Tell me what to do. Send it for that girl, sir. Mind your ten? Yes, sir. All right, go get her. the men. Yes, sir. Creever! Alert the men! Hello! Hurry, the men! Hey, Creever! Look the other way now, come on!
white doctor help my people. Indians and soldiers. White doctor treat all alike, like brothers. Now he gives my only son's life back to me. I will not make war with you anymore. I'll do everything in my power to see that you and your people live in peace in the high country. Dr. Sewer, sir. May I offer you my congratulations? Thanks, Creever. And may I add that I think you're a very... Uh, Creever. How's the toothache? Oh, what? Well, sir, no. You know, yeah. I thought so. Wait for me in the hospital. There's an old Irish remedy I'd like to try. Ah, you're a great man, Doctor. You're a great man. <laughs> Save it! 